As most know, photosynthesis is the conversion of carbon dioxide and water into sugar, utilizing the energy of the sun. However, photosynthesis is actually composed of two separate processes, known as light reactions and the Kelvin cycle. The two are complements. Together, they allow plants to create the sugar molecules they need to survive. Light reactions, as implied by their name, require energy from light in order to function. They convert solar energy into chemical energy through complexes known as photosystems. Light reactions take place in the chloroplast thylakoids. In light reactions, water is split into hydrogen ions, protons, and electrons, while oxygen is released as a byproduct. The electrons go through photosystem two and then through an electron transport chain. As the electrons fall to a lower energy level, hydrogen ions are pumped into the thylakoid space, creating a hydrogen gradient. This provides the energy for ATP synthase to phosphorylate ADP into ATP in the process known as phosphorylation. The electrons then travel through photosystem one and into another electron transport chain. Here, the enzyme NADP plus reductase adds a hydrogen ion and two electrons onto the electron carrier NADP, NADP plus to convert it to NADPH. Alternatively, the electrons may take a cyclical path involving only photosystem one, where ATP is the only substance produced. Here, electrons travel from the electron carrier peroxidin to the cytochrome complex and then continue on to the P700 chlorophyll in photosynthesis in photosystem 1. ATP is produced via chemiosmosis. There are remarkable similarities between light reactions in chloroplasts and respiration in mitochondria. In both, ATP is produced by creating a hydrogen gradient, which is used to run an ATP synthase protein that phosphorylates ADP into ATP. Several other electron carriers in the electron transport chains are also found in both processes, such as the cytochrome complex. The establishment of a hydrogen ion gradient is also similar in chloroplasts. The pumping of hydrogen ions from the stroma into the lumen is very similar to that done by mitochondria, which pump hydrogen ions from the matrix of the inner membrane space. Both processes get their energy from the electron transport chain. There are key differences, however. For one, mitochondria gains electrons from the oxidation of organic molecules, while chloroplasts get theirs from oxygen. Also, Mitochondria gain energy from a food source, while chloroplasts use direct energy from the sun. Unlike light reactions, the Kelvin cycle does not need light to function, nor does it produce energy. Note that, while it is sometimes referred to as the dark reactions, most of the activities of the Kelvin cycle take place during the day. It is actually an anabolic process that utilizes the ATP and NADPH produced from light reactions in order to build sugar. Unlike light reactions, which take place in the thylakoids, the Kelvin cycle takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. There are three stages of the Kelvin cycle, carbon fixation, reduction, and the regeneration of carbon dioxide receptor ribulose biphosphate. RUBP. Carbon fixation is the process by which carbon dioxide is attached to an organic compound, in this case RUBP. This is done through the enzyme Rubisco, which is the most abundant protein in the chloroplast. This forms an extremely unstable six carbon intermediate, which breaks apart into two molecules, three phosphoglycerate. This is done three times for a total of six molecules of three phosphoglycerate. The three phosphoglycerate undergoes the next step of the Kelvin cycle, reduction. The three molecules first gain phosphate from ATP, becoming one 3-biphosphate glycerate. 
Each one is then reduced using NADPH, losing the phosphate molecule in the process, and is converted into a molecule known as G3P. Thus, for every three carbon dioxides that are fixated, six G3P sugar molecules are produced. One of these sugar molecules is released for use, the rest are recycled back into RUBP. The carbon skeletons of the G3P are rearranged using three molecules of ATP so that the RUBP is ready to receive more carbon dioxide, thus continuing the cycle. In total, three carbon dioxide molecules, nine ATP and six NADPH are consumed to produce one G3P sugar molecule. Light reactions and the Kelvin cycle are both necessary to photosynthesis. The light reactions acting as the all-important energy source for the Kelvin cycle. The Kelvin cycle relies on light reactions for ATP and NADPH and the plant relies on the Kelvin cycle to convert carbon dioxide into usable sugar.